How hard is it to build a protege? I'm talking about a full cybernetic costume if you've never made one before. Hi, I'm Waffles, and about a year ago, I decided to embark on a journey to build my own. In the beginning, I was fueled by enthusiasm, so I didn't want to build just any protogen. I wanted to build the best that the world has ever seen. But there was a slight problem. I kind of overestimated my skill level and underestimated just how hard this problem is going to be. In the past, I've used my studio to create some basic fursuits, but I've never worked with electronics before. And besides, it's just adding some LEDs to a discount costume, how hard could it be? So with blind confidence, I figured that the best place to start would be by creating the head. On the quest to make a protogen, creating the head is the first boss that I ran into. I started out by buying a Kyborg head kit as this gave me a basic starting point to work from. The 3D printed head and tinted visor are arguably the two hardest parts to obtain, and they act kind of as the soul of the fursuit. Protogens might look like a complex creature, but you can really break them down into a few raw materials. The total cost for this entire project was about $1,500, with the head base being the single most expensive item at $400. Now, that amount includes things like tools, electronics, and raw materials, so it's more of a hazy estimation as opposed to an exact number. Have you ever had one of those jobs where they don't really teach you all that much and just kind of throw you out there to see how you do? That's what building this protogen felt like. I was constantly having to learn new skills, and it definitely felt like this protogen threw me out in the deep end. Soldering was my first real test as it was a requirement for just about everything I was planning on making. The first soldering on the protogen was attaching the headers to the computer powering this entire costume. It was definitely a sink or swim moment as just one wrong move with the hot soldering iron could cause the death of my tiny computer. It took a few attempts, but in the end I was finally able to get it working, making this feel like a true level up moment of my skill. One of the advantages I had going into this project was some basic experience making fursuits. This allowed me to knock out the bodysuit in a relatively short amount of time. Next, it was creating the paws that would cover my hands and feet. I had a lot of fun making the feet paws for this protogen as they are delightfully over-engineered. They feature plush claws, individual toes, and custom-made sandals. It's massive overkill for this project, but in the past I considered making paws one of my weaker skills, so I wanted to challenge myself and build a really nice set for this protogen. Next was making the tail, and man, that felt like a walk in the park compared to the challenges before it. Little did I know this would be the last easy thing I was going to be working on for quite a while. The single hardest thing about this entire project was making the armor. I used Mugiwara's Protogen Armor Template as a guide, albeit with some slight modifications. One of the reasons why making armor is so hard is that EVA foam is kind of a real pain to work with. Bending it first requires that you blast it with a heat gun, it often comes unstuck after gluing, and it's a challenging, to say the least, to paint. The first version I made fell apart almost instantly and used up a stack of expensive foam. The second version, is what you see here, is an improvement but still far from ideal. Knowing what I know now, I could almost certainly make a better third version, but perfect is the enemy of getting stuff done, and sometimes you just gotta move on. With the armor close to being finished, there's only a few things left before I can tackle the final boss of putting it all together. The first step was getting everything cleaned up and ready for paint. This required heating the surface, priming, and then finally painting to get a final result strong enough to hold up to the battle of fursuiting. The next loose end to tie up was finishing all the electronics that were going to go inside the armor. This first required running LEDs on the inside of the armor and then running all the wires to the backpack. These were all fed into a series of batteries that were attached to the inside of the armor. Finally, some custom connectors were added and then plastic screens to cover it all completes the armor and adds the last final touches. The final boss of this entire project is putting the protogen together. This puzzle of taking all these individual parts created over many long nights of work and combining them into something whole. After over a year of hard work, I accomplished my goal of building a protogen, and not only that, building the best protogen that I could. This only left one question. Is it possible for someone who's never made a protogen before to make a truly great protogen? I say yes. With hard work, a willingness to learn, and a little perseverance, it is possible. After finishing the protogen, I decided to take it to Furry Fiesta and give it its first trial by fire. 
Limited bag space necessitate that I cut it in half and instead only bring it to the con as a partial fursuit. There, I was able to meet up a ton of digital dragon enthusiasts and take some cool photos too. Furry cons are a crazy space and it's wild seeing so many different costumes walk around in one place. During the con, the progen faced only one major issue of inconsistent power. Low power was causing all the fans to simultaneously turn off and that made the head quickly turn into an oven. Also, during the flight home, the progen faced a few small major issues. Bad packing had caused some damage. Luckily though, it was all relatively easy to fix. With the con over and the fursuit mostly put it back together, here are some of the quirks and features about owning a protogen. It's very large. Even for fursuit standards, it's quite big. This makes things like transportation a challenge, but on the flip side, it's also what gives it so much personality. It's complex. Just putting it on requires snapping seven buckles, plugging in five cables, and attaching four pieces of Velcro. It basically requires a manual to use. On the flip side though, one of the best things about this entire fursuit are all the fans. When running, they blast cold air into your face, and heat definitely is an issue while first sitting around a convention. Speaking of next projects, if you want to learn what I'm going to build next, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I felt so much joy telling the story about how I built this protogen, and by you hitting the like button, you helped share that story with the world. It was a blast meeting everyone at TFF, and I love seeing all the different things you guys create. If you're interested in building your own fursuit, check out the Telegram and Discord group below. They have a great community and it's my go-to place for asking a fursuit related question. Now, I know what you're thinking. Now that the protogen is finished, what am I gonna do with it next? The most honest answer is probably sell it. It currently takes up a lot of space and I've been kind of itching on building something new. This project really got out of hand, but I'm quite happy with how it turned out in the end. It's not perfect, but it shows that sticking with the process really works. This protogen could theoretically have been built by anyone as long as I stuck with it and arguably believed in themselves a little bit. I hope you found this project cool and I'm excited to do more things like it in the future. So with all that being said, hasta pronto and I can't wait to see y'all again soon.